Hey everyone, new tool here called Bulk Editor for 3ds Max. And if you want to know what that does, it's simply used for bulk editing properties, parameters, objects, shaders, materials across your entire scene. Um, I'll go through the three components that make up this tool. And then at the end, I'll go through and kind of go into the more details of each component. Uh, so quickly here, what you'll do is you'll just select what you want to edit. It will show you all the instances that it's finding in your scene. And then you can go ahead and uh, edit the parameters right here just by inputting a number. You'll see our boxes here, the height. It's going to change uh, in real time. You can restrict it to scene selection or all. In this case, we'll just leave it on all and we'll go to 20. You can adjust the segs, any parameter. Now you're wondering where's the rest of the parameters. I have those hidden. You can uh, adjust those here by checking on what you want to see out in the main edit dialog, or if you want to uh, hide those that maybe aren't edited very often, you can toggle this visibility button that will show you all the properties versus the ones you chose to highlight. Um, you can restrict what's being edited by changing this drop down. So if you do scene selection, it's going to do what you have selected out here. So we'll go ahead and highlight these, do scene selection, and do five, and you'll see only those are being edited. So super useful feature. Uh, lastly, we do have an option to do spreadsheet editor that allows you to view every property in more of a table layout, and that allows you to sort items by their values if you want to try to find specific objects based on a property's value. And then you can select them in here by simply just highlighting them, and that highlights them out in the viewport. So let's get into the features of everything and how it works in detail. So this is our main super class browser. And this is how you can kind of restrict and quickly navigate the overall scene and what's, uh, what components live in the scene. You can change that by changing this drop down. I have it on all by default. Uh, you can choose base objects, which is only going to show you the core object of each node. You can Choose modifiers, materials, all these options here. If you want to make your own, you can just hit edit filter settings, and then you can toggle on or off the specific classes you would like to see. So if we go to say texture maps, you'll see it's going to show us all the instances. If you select that, you'll be able to see the specific instances and the dependence of where it's being used. So that's super useful also for modifiers and materials to kind of see where stuff's being used. Um, if you're wondering why does this say two, it's because this modifier is instance on these two objects. So you can see back here, these two objects selected. That's why the bend modifier is showing us two. So we'll go back to all and we'll leave the bend modifier selected for the moment. Um, we'll scale this up a little bit here. Um, Everything has tooltips to help you kind of navigate around if you have any questions. So we'll go into the options of the bend modifier. We'll change this onto all and we'll go ahead and hit uh, 10 for the bend modifier. You can do 90. Obviously it's going to update. Now, if you want to, like I said, adjust what's visible in here, because you don't always want to see everything. You do have the option of searching for an attribute or you can click this filter option and you can choose. I only want to see these three things for the particular uh, bend modifier. So anytime you come back to that, it's only going to show those. Now you can quickly toggle to show all of them again, like I said earlier. And then if you click this select button, that will automatically find the objects in the viewport or scene, I should say, that are using the bend modifier. Otherwise, if you want to specify individual bend modifier instances and their node dependence, you can select them up here. Now one of the nice things about the property editor is if you're editing the bend modifier, you can actually click this to duplicate the window, kind of just throw it off to the side. And then if you want to have another one, you can duplicate that as well and maybe change the settings for specific adjustments related to, uh, you know, when you're going to edit with parameters within this dialog. Or if you want to have multiple property editors open at one time, so you can see we have the bend and now the box open. Next, we have the ability to right click on any of these objects and you can mass edit certain properties that are available to them. 
So let's just say for, let's go to material. That's a real helpful one. Materials, let's just say the Vexus material. We don't want that in our scene anymore. We can go down to materials and we can actually delete it. Uh, and then I'll remove it entirely from the scene so you no longer have that material. Uh, you can also do it with texture maps. Uh, that's a super useful one because that feature doesn't natively exist in 3ds Max. So you can go through textures, delete. Now if we go back to base objects, one of the cool things here is we have all these objects up here. And let's just say, let me go to base objects. Okay. Geometry. Now you can see all these objects are separate instances. Some of them have four or five instances. What you can do is actually right click on these and you can say objects make instance. And now you'll pick one that you want to be your source and hit OK. And now all those objects are instances of each other. We can even call, kind of combine multiple instance groups. And now we have one single box that is an instance for all of them. And that instancing feature exists on a lot of these options. We have, you can do that for materials, modifiers, you can do it on objects, uh, and you can even do it on texture maps, which is a great feature to consolidate the editing of texture maps. You can do the reverse by making them unique. Uh, so if I select these and do objects make unique, now they're all separate instances. Uh, render elements you can delete from here in bulk. Uh, you can quickly edit a texture map, which is a great feature. If you find a material and you're like, where in the heck is this material at? You can find it in here. Let's go back to uh, materials. You can right click and you can go to edit and that'll automatically open it in your edit dialog or your schematic or uh, the slate editor. If you have that as your default editor. That will automatically open it in there. So we'll show you here, edit, and you can see it makes a new tab with the name of the material and graphs it in there for you. I tend to use the compact one, so we'll leave that there. Um, same with effects, you have edit, enable, disable, and delete. Um, another useful feature is the modifiers option. So we have a collapse to modifier. So one of the ways that would be used is, you know, I have my box here. You can see there's a modifier chamfer on the bottom. You maybe want to collapse stuff to that. So we'll find the chamfer modifier because that's what we want to collapse to. So we'll change this to modifiers and chamfer. And then what we can do is either specify which objects, or we'll just do all the chamfer modifiers in the entire file. So we'll go here and go collapse to modifier. So you can now see it collapsed everything from the chamfer modifier and below. So to do that again, to show you maybe another example of that, let's go ahead and add, <clears throat> we'll add another chamfer. Um, let's change this to do one. Well, the chamfer's already on there, so it's acting a little weird. Let's go ahead and add, we'll do spherify. And then let's also add one more above that. We'll do the melt. We'll crank that up a bit. So let's say we want to collapse from Spherify down. Uh, we will go ahead and find the Spherify modifier. We'll just hit refresh, make sure we got all of them. We'll go modifiers. And we'll go collapse too. So you can see it collapsed pretty much from that modifier down to the bottom of the stack, keeping everything above it. So another useful feature. Um, everything else is pretty self-explanatory. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out and let me know what you think. Thanks.